The Dallas Cowboys organized team activities have kicked off. We were in practice today. We noticed a couple things. Nobody's wearing the number zero after ah. a much highly debated topic. <laughs> he, Chris wasn't wearing it. Uh, first of all, the league is very pleased that you go with the official organized yes. team activities. OTAs. OTAs, mini camp. They used to have something called quarterback school. Uh -huh. It's it's just practice. Right. Uh, and in the case of uh, of this week's workout, it's a lot of walkthrough kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, we can rattle through. In fact, let's go position by position okay. group if we could. So in the defensive backfield, mm -hmm. uh, Javon Curse, the plan is for him to wear number zero. Agent zero. Uh, yeah, uh, he put in the claim for it, even yeah. though Micah Parsons went on Twitter right. and made his claim, but that's not how it works. Yeah. You have to go down to the locker room and then the veteran got the number. But you made the observation that today, number 27, right. tallest safety of the league was still <laughs> running around. So maybe it's to be determined or maybe they just haven't gotten the jersey made yet. Uh, yeah, and of course we know that this equipment crew here, uh, they've been doing this a long time. So. Uh, we, we, you know what, we need to ask yeah. Maybe they just haven't gotten gotten it back from the seamstress yeah. yet. <laughs> but uh, we certainly did note mm -hmm. uh, the the presence of Gilmore, the new cornerback. Right. Didn't see much of Diggs mm -hmm. uh, in this workout, but Gilmore, very noticeable and very active wearing uh, 21, which yeah. is another rather famous number around here. Yeah. Obviously, Emmett Smith, and then before that, Deion Sanders. So. Uh, the secondary, and by the way, a lot of practice with uh, three safeties mm -hmm. and then a lot of work with Bland as the slot guy. So yeah. um, they, they have they have some weapons to work with and they have some jersey work to be done with at least one guy. No kidding. Okay, now let's move to linebacker. linebacker. Micah Parsons, Coach Mike McCarthy saying that Parsons, he walked by him in the hallway and he was arguing with his teammates about his weight, which... McCarthy says is all is well, yeah. so that must be a good sign. <laughs> yeah, part of what, he, what McCarthy's telling us is he's walking down the hall and you he can hear Micah yeah. giving people the business right. and they're giving it back to him. Yep. And that is standard operating procedure around here. Totally. Uh, the effervescent Micah Parsons, you, you just can't keep that good man down. <laughs> uh, he is, you, you're not going to be able to see that he gained five pounds. Right. Um, and believe me, we kind of look for it. He, uh, did some training at the team act facility with boxing this week mm -hmm. and uh, the two best pals cooks and Gilmore were with him mm -hmm. and he's standing next to them and he looks like twice their size maybe it's just the camera angle but <laughs> the, the increase in his bulk will be very subtle how it, it's gonna be game to game and, and series by series Micah lines up today as a defensive end yes so when they when they had their 11 starters out there Micah was a defensive end um, but I still want to make sure that he's thought of as a linebacker mm -hmm. because he still brings so much to the table. And yes, it's McCarthy. Um, he made that point. And then Dan Quinn, the coordinator, said he's a pass rushing linebacker. You, you go through the kind of the totem pole, the depth chart at linebacker, by the way. And Leighton Van Der Esch is the number one guy getting those snaps. And then next to him is mm -hmm. Damone Clark. There's a whole bunch of people, I guess nationally, that are thinking that Overshone, the Texas rookie, right. that it's his turn, or Jabril Cox, that it's his turn. They're not getting turns, not in these workouts, ahead of Damone Clark working next to Leighton Van Der Esch. Yes. Okay, let's move to the defensive line. Mozzie Smith out there today. What, did you, what were your takeaways? Uh, I didn't see much Tank Lawrence, mm -hmm. uh, and so Micah is the standout, jump out guy in the defensive line. Yeah. Um, they have a great deal of depth there to the point where uh, I'll give you a great example of a guy. Junior Fajoko yeah. has all kinds of really good credentials. Good point. Uh, he's going to put on, he, I think he weighs 267. He's going to put on weight. Cowboys think he's not just a defensive end, but that he can also go inside and be a three technique guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he put up numbers at college. Now this, this, this is different. It's a different level, but his temperament uh, is right and all those kind of things and yet there's five defensive ends mm -hmm. clearly going to be ahead of him but uh, he's out here and he's noticeable it's a good start to this workout for the rookie Falco. Mm -hmm. The defense is sure going to be fun to watch this season but let's switch over to the offensive side of the ball and the tight ends the youth movement is strong now I like your celebrity nickname for the young tight ends Fergushot. Fer Fergushot. But now along comes Schoon. Yes, yeah, so a Fergus shot Schoon. Maybe. <laughs> uh, and here's what's noticeable about Schoon. Obviously, his, he's, he's got size and he's yeah. got length and all the rest. Uh, not that the other two guys don't. Mm -hmm. 
He was in the first team mix. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of this practice, and it was inside the Ford Center, over here, it was almost like the varsity over here and the junior varsity over yeah. here. Uh, and he was with the varsity. Mm -hmm. And when they lined up two tight ends sometimes, it was Schoon and Ferguson. So I'm not saying they're gonna force feed him into a position that he hasn't earned or can't handle, but in this very early stage of what they're doing here, and, um, because I've said many times, if he doesn't become a starter caliber tight end quickly, mm -hmm. then it's kind of a wasted pick. Right. If he's just gonna be another Fergushot, yeah. nothing against either of those two guys, mm -hmm. you know, why do you need three Fergushots? Yeah. You already have two. Can he be up and better than that? Well, it's a good start for Schoon that he's, lining up, he's catching passes from Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. working with first team stuff. And then obviously, then you get to 12 personnel and 13 personnel, mm -hmm. but uh, a, a good start to these workouts for Schoon, as he looks like physically and otherwise, he fits right in, um, not just at the bottom of the tight end barrel. Yeah. Coach Mike McCarthy said, it's great to have wide receiver Brandon Cooks on the team. He was out there today practicing, definitely quick, definitely with it. He's hanging out with C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup. Seems like he's one of the guys already. Yeah. What were your takeaways at receiver? Well, there's a, there's a professionalism about him. Mm -hmm. And you just, it's a sense. Right. It, it, there's, he knows what to do. Absolutely. And um, that's not to take away from the personality of some other guys. You know, you got this guy who's kind of goofy. Yeah. And that guy who kind of likes to climb. Not, nothing wrong with all that. No. Uh, but Brandon Cooks, it, it, and this is his reputation in Houston too, very much all business. And uh, there have been the cynics and the critics who say, well, then why does he get traded so often as he has in his career? It's not because the team that has him doesn't want him. It's because the next team wants him. Right. Uh, and the Cowboys, of course, have wanted him ever since the trade deadline last year. He comes in here right away uh, and and gets busy with the business of football life. <laughs> one of the first things he did, I know for a fact, he got, came to town and looked for a house. Yeah. One of the first things he did, which is the way you take care of your business, football, and beyond. Yep. Obviously, his kinship with uh, Gilmore, yeah. they became best friends when they were together in New England. Uh, that's helpful in terms of the locker room vibe. Uh, let's go have a workout separate from everybody with Micah. All, all those kind of things. Uh, Brandon Cooks brings to the table a thousand yard mm -hmm. per year kind of wide receiver. And that's within his reach again this year. But professionalism stands out every single time he runs a route. Mm -hmm. Another thing we noticed at Cowboys OTAs today was Tony Pollard. Tony has been participating in the OTAs practice so far. Of course, it's, it's more of walkthroughs. It's not like they're actually hitting or anything. And he did have a pretty large break, not a brace, what would you call that? Like a uh, compression? Yeah, support, Com yeah, thing? support, yeah. yeah. Um, but he looks good. You're right. It, first of all, it's the story of the day. It's gotta be. For the Cowboys, because- That's your running back one, Al. No question. And. There have been observers who've wondered, when's he coming back? Is he going to be the same? Yeah. Emmett's no less an authority than Emmett Smith said, I'm a little worried mm -hmm. after the lower leg and the lower leg. Yeah, fractures, Se fractures. Season, uh, season ending stuff mm -hmm. uh, in two spots in his leg, of course, in the loss uh, at the Niners in the playoffs. Yeah. But even Emmett has wondered, do you come back the same? Yeah. Or will it take a while to come back the same? So. While the Cowboys talked about he'll be ready for the regular season, and I think that much is clear, mm -hmm. I don't think we all knew, mm -hmm. I didn't, that he was gonna be out here, and when it comes to first team snaps, yeah. he's the first team guy. Now, <clears throat> Bree, you're right. Is he out here running of his four, four 40s? Uh, he's not doing that yet. Is he Nobody cut, was doing that. Correct. Right. Uh, is he cutting and planting as hard as he can? Some guys were doing that. Mm -hmm. He wasn't involved in that. but. He was the first team running back mm -hmm. when they lined up with 11 guys. And then when they went to individuals, he was the first team running back again. I think it's very encouraging. I think it's mildly surprising. Uh, and it's, it's a really good sign, I think, that the Cowboys uh, are not gonna regret yeah. doing the $10 million one year deal. Uh, there was hesitation, again, on people that didn't uh, have medical knowledge. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what are we doing here? Not that I'm an advocate of paying $10 million to a running back necessarily, mm -hmm. But the worry that he wasn't going to be worth the $10 million because he's still going to be injured, yeah. uh, very quickly, I think that worry is fading. <laughs>